I have long wondered why anicophorans are still around, while animals as spectacular as, for example, Tyrannosaurus rex are gone. Velvet worms had existed for hundreds of millions of years when the first T-rex was born, but consider this. T-rex lived 65 million years ago, was as tall as the roof of a two-floor building, could rip almost a hundred kilograms of flesh in a single bite, yet, despite all of its power, it is gone and the onychophoran, a tiny worm in the forest floor, is still alive. Why? In fact, velvet worms have survived all major extinction events, including the Permian triassic extinction that wiped out over 90% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species. Originally, velvet worms lived in marine ecosystems and uh, probably did not survive the Devonian extinction. We just don't have the fossils to know. However, they also colonized land before the Ordovician period, which means that they were exposed to later extinction events, such as the Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous extinctions. They certainly were exposed on land to the Permian extinction, caused by Siberian volcanoes that poisoned the atmosphere, burned terrestrial ecosystems, and polluted and heated the sea to 40 Celsius in some areas. They survived the Triassic extinction, which killed the dominant crocodiles and opened space for the emerging dinosaurs. And they also survived the Cretaceous extinction, which was apparently related to volcanism and perhaps to an asteroid impact. To understand how Onychophoran survived these extinction events, we need to look at the aftermath of these catastrophes. Onychophorans are known to occur in habitats that are repeatedly affected by fire, ash, and toxic gas. They do this by burrowing deep underground, and they can survive without food for weeks or even months. After these extinction events, both marine and terrestrial ecosystems became vast areas open to our strategy invaders, small organisms with short reproductive cycles and large numbers of offspring per female. This description fits insects, which are known to have been less affected by these extinctions and which are also a basic food source for onychophorans. The fossil record shows that, when compared with the earlier condition, communities have fewer species, but populations are large and the organisms have smaller bodies. This is called the Lilliput effect. We know that Onychophorans survived, so they must have found food and refuge when they emerged, at least in areas less strongly affected by the eruptions. But all of this is extrapolation. Are there any hard data that can be used to assess this reconstruction of what happened to Onychophorans during mass extinctions? We are lucky. There are hard data. In the 1960s, Onychophorans survived the volcanic eruption of the Irazú volcano in Costa Rica. And thanks to the excellent work of Costa Rican entomologist Álvaro Ville, we know that while organisms directly reached by the incandescent gases and materials died instantly, those that were at some distance from the volcano survived or, in some cases, even thrived. Ville discovered that the insects that survived and the insects that increased populations thanks to the eruptions had several characteristics in common. They spent a significant time under or inside vegetation or the soil, they are protected by substances that they excrete or collect, and their food is not contaminated by the ashes, for example, 
They feed on sap or on the insides of prey. Insects whose bodies or food are reached by the ash die from dehydration or a blocked digestive system. And they may stay alive for some time, but defenseless on the ground. This means that when Onycophorans emerged from the soil, at some distance from the volcanoes that played that important role in the Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous extinctions, they probably found food in the form of a large number of living but defenseless insects and other invertebrates that were there dying from the effects of the ash. They may also have found food in the insects that increased their populations thanks to the reduction of predators, parasites, and parasitoids that disappear with volcanic eruptions. It has been suggested that we are causing a new mass extinction event through unsustainable use of land, overuse of water resources for agriculture, and energy uses that lead to climate change. However, recent evidence suggests that human caused extinctions have been only 1.5 species per year for the last 500 years, and that this loss has likely been offset by a speciation. But if there is a new mass extinction, could Onycophoran survive it? Velvet worms are remarkable. While marine species likely became extinct, terrestrial Onycophorans have endured and they have endured disastrous changes during the Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous periods. They can survive extreme conditions by burrowing deep on the ground and can survive without food, at least for weeks. They also survive in heavily urbanized areas. So I believe they may have the capacity to also endure future natural extinctions and that after the last human takes the last selfie, they will continue to walk the earth. Thank you.